the date was 28 January 1819. Sir Thomas Stamford Ruffles and his men landed on an island that sat on the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula. They saw its potential as a profitable British trading colony, how the East Asia-Europe route would attract entrepot trade and cheap labour. And they were right. News of the free port spread, attracting migrants from Malaya and India. The prospect of jobs also attracted many Chinese looking to escape economic and political problems in China, like overpopulation and civil wars. Hence, many poor Chinese, especially from coastal cities in southern China, made the long journey on junks in search of better fortunes and opportunities in Singapore. The port flourish and trade volume increased greatly. Together with other migrant workers, the Chinese work hard to build roads, railways and telegraph lines connecting Singapore to the world. Diligent and hardy, they form the backbone of Singapore's population and labour force. The British saw them as pure labour for the growing economy and were not interested in their welfare. Hence, the migrants had to fend for themselves. For the Chinese, many initially dreamt of earning enough to return home. While some did go back, many eventually decided to settle down in Singapore where they continued their customs and beliefs carried over from China without much interference from the British. The Chinese instilled the importance of filial piety in their children and whipped up familiar flavours from home. They also set up clan associations, schools and temples to provide social support, maintaining traditional practices like the Zhongyuan Festival, commonly known today as the Hungry Ghost Festival. Even when these cultural practices started to disappear in China in the early 20th century when some Chinese regarded them as holding back China's progress. By the time Singapore became a self-governing state in 1959, years of colonial rule had a great impact on the local population. Many first-generation leaders, like Singapore's founding Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, studied under a British education system and continued to maintain certain policies established by the British, such as the legal and parliamentary systems. Later, English was also made the main working language so as to improve communications amongst diverse ethnic groups. Meanwhile, the Chinese borrowed English words like taxi, de shi, and percent, ba xian, and used them in their daily conversations. British influence was even seen in food. The well-loved Singaporean breakfast staple, kaya, was believed to have been invented by Peranakan Chinese who used coconut milk, eggs, and pandan leaves to replace the fruit found in Western jams. Hainanese migrants who arrived in Singapore found work in Peranakan Chinese homes and on board British ships. This explains how the Hainanese picked up the habit of eating and serving British style breakfast coffee and tea, half-boiled eggs, toast with kaya. But as early Chinese migrants made changes to their language and food due to Singapore's unique environment, little did they know it was only just the beginning.